Hey guys, how you doing today? I'm going to be showing you in this video how to use Proxmox with one IP. And what I mean by that is sometimes when you uh, order a dedicated server um, from a cloud provider, they sometimes only give you one IP address or maybe you're just trying to save costs and you don't want to purchase additional IPs. So you want to use one static IP and not just use it for Proxmox, but you can also use it for a VMware like a hypervisor and then you create IP tables to allow certain ports, uh, like let's say you have three VMs. One's a web server, one's a database server, and let's just say the other one's a game server. But they all can't use that same IP, right? Because the static IP is assigned to Proxmox, and then you have all these VMs, but they don't have extra IPs to assign those servers. So what you can do is use IP tables to allow certain traffic to like a local network to get access to that VM. So I'm going to kind of show you as we go along here on how to do that. I did want to show you this PowerPoint of what we're going to be doing. So you can see here's our internet connection coming to our dedicated server at a data center or maybe it's you know at your house. Um, then you could do uh, that's our public IP. So you can see the hardware interface is EN01. That goes to a virtual bridge, which is VMBR0, and it's got that static IP that you only have that one IP address to. Then you can see we created another hardware bridge onto that called VMBR1, and then we gave this public, uh, I'm sorry, this local uh, static IP address. Then within each VM that's connected to that uh, virtual bridge, we gave it these local IPs. You can sign any IP you want within this range, but uh, I just want to show you what I did. I have three VMs, and I just gave it 1.5, you know, 150, 160, 170, easy to remember. Um, and these can all tunnel through this virtual bridge to that virtual bridge, and then out to the internet. So that's how that works. This is uh, basically this dedicated box. So I'll hope this showing it in a display format like this, you're gonna see what we're gonna be doing. You're basically routing all these packets out this gateway into this virtual bridge, and then eventually out to this IP address, out to the internet. So that's how that works. So let's go ahead and dive in, and I'm gonna show you how, how to accomplish this. So you can see we're at our Proxmox. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and log in. We have uh, three uh, VMs in this server. Uh, they all have local IPs, and what I mean by that is they all have a 192.168.10.100 address. So this is like an internal LAN, I guess you could call it. That is bridged to this virtual interface, which is that is bridged to the actual network uh, hardware interface. So you can see this is our public IP here, and what you want to do is go ahead and go to create, and we're going to create a Linux bridge. And we already have this created, so I'm just going to show you what you need to create. So you're going to want to name it VMBR1. And then in the IPv4, that's where we need to type in the local. Now, this can be any subnet, practically, uh, any variation, really. But it needs to be a local subnet, kind of like that. And then we're doing the slash 24, because that's the uh, subnet for that IP range. So... It's best to use my example so then you don't get confused with different subnets and having, you know, you, you just follow what I do and it's going to work. So go ahead and type that in. Make sure auto start is on and then you hit create. I'm not hitting create because you can see I already have um, the VMBR1 Linux bridge right here and it's literally the same set of settings that I just did. You can see that's the subnet there. So once you have that created, you can go into your uh, VM now, and you also need to make sure you need to go to hardware, and you go to network device here, and you need to change it to the VMBR1. It'll default to the zero one because that's usually what happens when you cr you only have one uh, interface. So you want to make sure it's the VMBR1 uh, bridge there. So once you have that set, then you probably need to reboot your VM, uh, but sometimes you don't need to do that. So once you get into your VM, then um, it should have no IP address because there is no DHCP server. So we need to go to Control Panel, 
go to network and internet, network and sharing center, and then change adapter settings. Then right click on our interface, go to properties, double click on IP version four, and then set this as a static IP for that same, you want to be in that same subnet. So you want to do the 192.168.10.whatever. Uh, I just did .160 in this case. And then you want to make sure your default gateway is that .100 because that's what we set that interface to. So that's the gateway to get out of that bridge onto the next bridge. So that's why you want to make sure that's the .100 there. Or if you do .1, it's not going to work. So you want to make sure you do .100. Uh, the, basically the same IP as you just set in the previous section that we just set up that um, network bridge. And then the DNS, you just want to do Google's DNS or, or a cloud, uh, uh, cloud DNS or, you know, whatever. Whatever DNS server you prefer. So we can go and close that out. Close that out. So I just did a quick IP config slash all just to make sure we are reading that IP address and we are. And once you set these IPs correctly, you should be able to get onto the Internet. So I should be able to open up Google right now and reach out to the Internet. So let's go ahead and make sure that works. Sorry, this uh, VM is a little slow because I didn't really give it a lot of resources. OK, so now you can see Google's up and you can see I'm online. And if I do what is my IP, it's going to give me the IP address of that static IP that's assigned to Proxmox because it's basically using that shared Internet connection do that one static IP. So now you're saying, OK, that's great. I have Internet at, at least, but how do I let's say I'm hosting like right now I have XAMP on here and I'm hosting a couple websites. How do I get that public IP like port 80 and 443 to this VM? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. First, you need to open up your firewall on the VM and make sure you have port 80 and 443 open. So if you don't have this set up, you need to create a rule. It's very easy. You just go here, go into your firewall, hit new rule. And this could be a web server. This could be a game server. So if you're hosting like a CSGO server, open up 27015 TCP and UDP. Um, you know, it's the same process. It's not just for web servers. So we just hit next. And let's say we need to open up uh, port 80. And then we're going to do comma 443 because we're going to do two ports. Or if you had like a range, like you want to do 80 through 100 or, you know, whatever you're trying to do, you can do that um, here. So we're doing TCP. Hit next. Allow the connection. Yep. All rules. Yep. And then we'll just name it HTTP and HTTPS. But like I said, I'm not going to hit finish because I already have this exact rule created. I'm just showing you how to create it. So I'm hitting cancel because I already have it here. So once you have that set up. And you know your web server is working by just doing localhost here. And you can see it is working. It's just there's, you know, I don't have anything going to localhost right now. But you can see Apache is running on this port. So it is working. You know, I went ahead and corrected that by just adding this rule in my HTV host file, which I didn't uh, add by mistake. So once I add in that in there and I restarted my Apache service here, <clears throat> just do a simple restart. Now when I open up localhost, it'll show you this page, which is this uh, index file here. So if I just simply you know, add, you know, demo and yes, because I don't have pipe write permissions in that file. If I hit refresh, you can see demo. So that's going to that actual file there. So now that we know our web server is working locally and we have the right ports open, we know it's fully working. So now we got to create some magic here. <clears throat> what you need to do now is open up SSH into your Proxmox server. So let's go ahead and do that. And we want to create um, three rules. So I'm going to go ahead and open up PuTTY. We're going to connect to our Proxmox uh, public IP, which is, that's where our public IP is. And then we're going to hit open. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and put in the password here, but you can just use putty and SSH and get to that point. All right, we are now SSH into our box here. So go ahead and, yep, so we are connected and we are good. So what you wanna do is create three rules. So I mean, well really two rules, I'm just adding a third one in there because I'm assuming you probably want RDP access uh, from outside of this server, correct? I would think so. Um, so the first rule is going to create, you can see right here, IP tables, uh, pre-routing, because it's basically gonna take, this is your public, because you only get one IP address, remember that. And so if someone goes to this public IP and it's using and they're on port 80, it's going to redirect all that traffic to this destination, which is that IP address we set for this box on port 80. So does that make sense? So you want to copy that rule and paste it in here and then hit enter. And that's going to basically take all that port 80 traffic from that public IP to this local IP. So that's as simple as that, you guys. And you can do that for anything. So like, let's say, um, you know, you want to do it for um, your a CS, you got, you're running a CSGO server. So I just basically uh, copy that. Sorry, I actually hit the wrong key. So copy that. And then, uh, you know, I believe CSGO uses 27015. So you want to make sure you change it there. And then whatever server on your, that local network you created, and then change it here. So let's say we had another server on that network and we set it at a static IP to 161. Then we would set it for that, that port, that port, and then you would create that rule. And then I'm copying this and pasting it again because I think CSGO also requires UDP. So it's as simple as that. So you would just change it from TCP to UDP and then paste these two rules in your list and there you have it. You have your, uh, firewall rule set up. Now I'm not creating this rule because I already have it created so I don't really need to recreate it um, but I'm just showing you how to uh, create those rules. Once you have those rules open you can open up um, any web browser not from this server but like your actual computer and go to your public static IP and there you have it. It's open and working. So I'll show you another example. Here is um, Let's go to this server. Actually, this server is running uh, a CSGO server. <laughs> so let's go ahead and log in. All right, so we are logged in. So this is another server that's sharing that same public static IP. So you can see, once I do another IP config slash all, you can see I set this IP for 10.150. So this is where our CSGO server is at. So I would basically change this to uh, 50 here, and 50, and then I would copy these rules and paste them into our SSH uh, connection and create those IP table rules. Now, once you are done uh, creating those rules, let's say you create a rule and you're like, oh crap, I didn't mean to create that rule, or maybe you duplicated the rule and you just want to delete it, or maybe you don't want it anymore and you want to delete it, I'm going to show you how to do that and how to list the rules as well. All right, so once we are in our SSH tunnel, we're gonna go ahead and do some commands to list all of our IP table rules. So you wanna type in IP tables, space tac t, space nat, sp uh, tac l, tac tac line, tac number, and hit enter. <clears throat> so this is listing all of our IP table rules that we have set up on this uh, Proxmox server. So you can see the target, you can see if it's TCP or UDP, you can see it's source anywhere, which is good, the destination, and then the final destination and the um, protocol type, and the IP, and then you see the port number and the IP address at the end. You can see those are all those local IPs that we set up. So let's say we need to delete one of these. Uh, because you messed it up or whatever. So you can just type in IP tables, tac T, nat, tac capital D, and then you want to do pre-routing, I believe. And then you just type in the number. So you can see uh, number nine 
uh, let's say we just want to delete that because we messed up. We didn't want to do UDP or the wrong port or whatever. So we just type in nine, hit enter. It deleted that rule. So if I do uh, line numbers again, you can see number nine is now gone. Now before you exit, because you think you're all done, you actually want to do IP tables, uh, TAC, uh, save. And that's going to save all the rules to the server. So now you can safely exit out of the SSH tunnel and you're all done. So there you guys have it. That's how you can have one public static IP, two Proxmox, and then it, within Proxmox, you can have three VMs uh, with local IPs and still be able to utilize them and still have internet connection and you can, you can tell what ports to open to what VM. Uh, it's pretty cool using IP tables. It's pretty advanced.